Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to see how to take the derivative of a hyperbolic function and then in the next video we'll show you how to take an integral of a hyperbolic function and what you'll find is that it's very similar to doing it for regular trigonometric functions. You just have to know what the derivatives are of the various types of hyperbolic functions. So here we have the hyperbolic secant of x or actually the hyperbolic secant of 4x and of course the derivative of the secant is the secant times the tangent, so the derivative of the hyperbolic secant is also the secant times the tangent, except we have to have a negative sign in there as well, so that means that this now becomes equal to the, the negative hyperbolic secant of uh, 4x times the hyperbolic tangent of 4x times the derivative of the angle, as you could say, well, we can call this the angle. It's not really the angle, of course, when we're dealing with hyperbolic functions, but it still works the same way. So that will be times 4. So this then gets written to be minus 4 times the hyperbolic secant of 4x times the hyperbolic tangent of 4x. So that would be the derivative of the hyperbolic secant of 4x. Now we're going to take the second derivative of that, so if we take the second derivative of this, means we're going to take the first derivative of that. So this is equal to the first derivative of what we ended up with over here, which is a minus 4. And of course we can take the negative 4 and take it outside, so it becomes minus 4 times the derivative with respect to x of what's remaining. So now we're going to take the derivative of this, and of course that's a product, so we're going to use a product rule. So this becomes equal to, and I'm going to need a lot of room here, minus 4 times. Here we'll take the first, which is the hyperbolic secant of 4x, times the derivative of the second. Now the derivative of the tangent is the secant square, so the derivative of the hyperbolic tangent is the hyperbolic secant square. So it gives us uh, times the hyperbolic secant square of 4x, and then of course we still need to multiply times the derivative of 4x, which is times 4, so maybe I'll just go ahead and do this, plus the second, which is the hyperbolic tangent of 4x, times the derivative of the first, and of course that we have right over here, so that would be times a minus 4 times the hyperbolic secant of 4x times the hyperbolic tangent of 4x. Like that. So it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And now let's see what we can factor out because we have two terms, the first term and the second term. And let's see here we have a secant, hyperbolic secant cubed and here we have a single hyperbolic secant so we can factor out one of these and one of these. And then let's see here, I think that's it. All right. Also, I think we can factor out a 4 and a 4 here, or a negative 4. So we can factor out this one. Let me go ahead and use red to indicate so this 4 and this minus 4. That can be factored out as well. I think I'm going to factor out a negative 4, and then we'll get the following. So factor out a negative 4 times a negative 4. That gives us a positive 16. Factor out a hyperbolic secant of 4x. And then let's see what we have left. So since we pull out a negative 4, this here becomes negative. And since we pulled out a negative 4 and a secant, a hyperbolic secant of 4x, then we're left with this. And so this will become positive since we pulled out a negative 4. So this becomes the hyperbolic tangent uh, squared of 4x minus, because since we pulled out a negative 4, this becomes minus the hyperbolic secant square of 4x. And this would then be the second derivative of what we started with, the hyperbolic secant of 4x. So you can see that the rules are fairly similar to the ones that you do, that you use for the regular trigonometric functions. There's just a few differences here and there with a negative sign. Other than that, use the very same technique as you have before to find the derivative. And that's how it's done.